I now recognize Mr. Carter for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, thank you very much. Mr. Gardner, for the people of Louisiana who have been very patient uh, in waiting for rail between New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Mobile, uh, here's your shot. Give them the shot of the arm of confidence that this is actually going to happen. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Carter. And um, we are uh, very confident about bringing service to the Gulf Coast. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have um, reached a settlement with our uh, partners. And our hope is that that could commence by the end of the year. We'll see. It could be pushed on a little longer. It's going to be depending on some construction work that's happening in Mobile, the station there, some other things. But we're working hard. There's strong support from the states. Uh, and the Southern Rail Commission, as you know, and um, we're really just at, at this point uh, got to get all the elements in place, but uh, Amtrak is committed, has been long committed to, to this service and to be a partner to the Southern Rail Commission. As it relates to Baton Rouge, uh, we um, uh, supported certainly the uh, Louisiana and Southern Rail Commission efforts there and have a um, strong partnership with Canadian Pacific, now KP, uh, KC uh, to provide, uh, to permit us to operate trains over that route. Uh, there's going to be some investment required, particularly to deal with the uh, spillway there, uh, to be able to uh, facilitate the service. But a good plan, uh, both ourselves and, and CP are soon to be in, in receipt of the uh, preliminary engineering work, uh, sort of report that's necessary for us to look at those opportunities. But um, we see that service there could happen uh, in several years, and, and on Mobile, uh, Tibetan, uh, to New Orleans, uh, that should be really within the year. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I know how hard you guys worked on it, but I want to emphasize the importance it is for the people of New Orleans, for the region, um, and it's something that has been long awaited, and we're very excited about the movement. In the Gulf Coast Working Group of 2017 report to Congress, they wrote, in the more than 10 years since Hurricane Katrina struck, Gulf Coast leaders and residents have made great strides in rebuilding businesses, communities, and infrastructure that connect cities across the region. In the last five years, more than $3 billion in private funds were invested in industrial, medical, IT, and aerospace, aerospace sectors. As mentioned earlier in this report, during the next 30 years, the Gulf Coast and Florida um, populations are expected to increase by 10 million to 13.8 million, respectively. For the region to harness this projected population growth, it needs multimodal transportation systems that provide transportations, transportation as alternatives. Do you believe that this route serves as the multimodal transportation system that was called for five years ago? I, I think it's the beginning of that service, absolutely. I, I, there's going to be um, the initial mm -hmm. corridor service and then uh, certainly opportunities to strengthen connectivity between the intercity passenger rail service and local transit because it, as, uh, as, as the report says, it's really critical that we create a network uh, of operations that can support people traveling without their cars. Um, but um, we think this initial service is a great start. Uh, we're excited for it and I uh, think there's a lot of support amongst um, do you see this for being useful for commuters as well as vacationers? Absolutely. Uh, we see there's a strong uh, international visitor component in New Orleans that will uh, find rail service, I think, attractive. And then we see a lot of opportunity along the uh, Gulf Coast there for many of the, the towns that have um, uh, things to offer visitors and uh, for workers and uh, who, who need to travel between the various cities for jobs. And we find ourselves now in hurricane season. Um, share with me your view on it being able to be utilized as a mode of transportation for disasters uh, and evacuations. Well, uh, we've had some experience with this in the past, and I think that um, the difficulty uh, typically with using uh, passenger trains for evacuation, unless it's well in advance, is that our host railroads, the freight railroads, often curtail their own operations in advance of a hurricane. So if they've shut down the railroad, we can't operate over it. Uh, having said that, certainly we, uh, we endeavor to work with uh, FEMA and work with the state emergency management folks about creating uh, opportunities for, for service when there is, when there is a need. Um, but it's, it's difficult where we don't control the railroad. Okay, you got a few seconds left. I wanna go back to these Chrissy Grants that were mentioned earlier. Uh, Chrissy Grants, share with us and the public the public benefit 
of, of your having access to Chrissy Grants? Well, Chrissy really is a, a unique program in that it's available to a broad uh, set of uh, eligible participants to cover a variety of rail improvements. Most of uh, the Chrissy grants we've ever been involved with are at the request of states or railroads who seek to, to gain safety investments or other improvements in their properties that'll Go facilitate passenger Go back for a second, roads. safety, safety, Absolutely. safety. One of the most significant things that we can do with transportation going through communities, it's making sure the communities are safe. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, I yield back. Gentlemen.